Hey guys and welcome back. I might look not in the best shape because this is the second time in a row when I'm recording this video. Just because the first time when I did it, I forgot one small thing. I forgot to click on the record button on the camera. So here's the second take. Like, as you notice, this topic is about the uh, LDAP authentication with a Zabbix and also JIT, which stands for just-in-time use user provisioning. So I was trying to stay away from this topic just because I I really help hate not help I really hate LDAP I hate configuring it and I knew right from the start that it's gonna cause a lot of pain but the topic is good and I'm sure there's many people who could be struggling with the same things that I did and might be searching for for some solution and before we jump in like the configuration part itself, let's talk about like what LDAP actually is, LDAP authentication in a Zabbix and why the default method of authentication is not good. Uh, what is the default authentication method? Well, it basically is the one when we create the users in a Zabbix frontend and the user is created in a Zabbix database and that's it, like no external softwares and, and whatever databases are uh, checked for that, which is absolutely fine if you have like a small team of one, two, maybe five, maybe 10 people who need to log into the Zabbix. It doesn't cause a lot of the problems. But uh, the problems happen as soon as you have some enterprise with 10, 15, I don't know, 100, whatever people who need to join Zabbix frontend and access it. And then someone new might join the company and someone might leave. And then you need to like revoke the access or add a new access. So problems can happen here. And LDAP authentication basically allows you to like have a single place of configuration, which is Active Directory in this case. And the, the problem with the LDAP previously was that there was you still had to manually create a users inside a Zabbix. And the only thing that was done with the Active Directory was that there was like comparison and checking that, okay, you're trying to log in with this user in a Zabbix, but is this user really like available and enabled in our Active Directory? If yes, then everything is good. You can connect, but remember all the permissions has to be set up in a Zabbix itself. If not, then well, bad for you and and you cannot access and then the just in time user provisioning came in which basically solves all the problems and uh, by configuring connection to your active directory you can automatically create the users in a Zabbix and by using some predefined parameters and some conditions, you can also define what kind of permissions user groups and 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 the roles this user which is, which is trying to log in will actually have. So basically it allows us to have the single point of configuration for our users who will be able to log into the Zabbix and also previously define like what kind of access they will have. And so let's jump into actual configuration. And for this configuration, I'm again using the wiki page of the, of the init max and they have the they actually have it about the LDAP Active Directory, also SAML in Azure ID or Microsoft Entry ID, and also also SCIM. And uh, you can follow through this guide. It basically mentions everything that you need to know and also mentions something that uh, might come handy because apparently there was a bug which... Uh, made some things didn't work, right? And whenever there is a bug, you can break your head trying to understand what actually happens. So read carefully through and, and you'll find all of your answers. I, as per usual, as per usual uh, read only through the lines, but uh, I managed to, to get the result. And as I previously said, like setting up LDAP uh, was like a nightmare for me and uh, initially I had the two options like okay whether I download a Windows server and configure an active directory or I just uh, as usually start my Oracle Linux machine and configure open LDAP there and I thought okay I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on downloading the Windows server and I'm gonna do everything in a Linux machine two days of pain and and two days of trial and error but uh, we still remain in error and after two days here we are with uh, windows server 2020 and active directory installed so i did not succeed with the linux i've tried like 10 different guides and tutorials on how to configure the open LDAP, but i will be completely honest it's it's just a crazy thing and i 
couldn't even like add a users and configure the base LDAP configuration. With uh, Active Directory, it's pretty straight in. Like, uh, as you can see, we have uh, one organization, which is subscribe, and you need to subscribe to this channel. And we have two users, which is one is me, Dmitry Lambert, and I am the member of just the users uh, group. And the second one is uh, the good old John Doe, uh, who is the member of the administrators. Then we have these uh, groups listed also here. So we have a users, administrators, um, base DN is uh, Dmitry.com. So that will use also for the configuration inside the Zabbix. And everything is sort of set up. And if you're just trying to set it up from the scratch, just like I did, like here in Active Directory, it's super easy. Like whenever you need to create a new user, you just uh, right click new, user fill in all the fields next 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 done while in the linux with open ldap it's i hope you will never find out how it is like if you know that stuff i'm super proud of you but i definitely don't so i'm happy that i decided to go with the active directory and uh, then we need to start with actual configuration of the zabbix and uh, partly we can like check everything here in a wiki so first of all first thing first in the user certification ldap check the LDAP as, so let's go here, user authentication. You need to change the default authentication to the LDAP. And you also need fill in the group, which will be used for deprovisioned uh, users. So whenever you try to log in with something that is not provisioned by your LDAP communication, it will go to disab disable. So essentially you will not be able to log into the Zabbix frontend. And then you need to go to the tab, which is LDAP settings. And here you need to add your server. And this is configuration in my case. So testing, whatever testing works. Uh, host is just IP address of your LDAP server or Active Directory in my case, which is the local IP address, my Windows virtual machine. Port default 389, nothing changes here. Then base DN, uh, this is the syntax of the LDAP. So we have a DC Dimitri comma DC equals com. And this comes from um, there we go here. This comes from uh, this place, but actually it's much more convenient to use the PowerShell. And here you can find all of those crazy, crazy letters and, and parameters uh, listed. So you can test it out and find the correct ones. As you can see, the uh, primary group as example, where the object ca category DC equals Dmitri, Dmitri and comma DC equals com. So by looking on this, we know what we need to um, fill in in a base DN. Then for the search attributes, so what we're actually going to be using the uh, for the search and user principal name, again, we again, we can go for uh, PowerShell and try to find user user principal name, as you can see, it is uh, the username, then at and the domain name, which is the Dmitry.com. So fill in that in your LDAP configuration, then what are we going to actually use to bind? And uh, I am using the user administrator, which is also available in the group users in the same Dmitry domain and well, DC Dmitry DC.com. That's the remains the same thing. Choose the password. And I said the password from the first time I configured the Active Directory, I think. And uh, so yeah, fill in the password here. That is for the basic configuration of the LDAP. And then the new, uh, the exact thing is the configure JIT provisioning. So tick here, group configuration, member of or group of names. And this is the part which is listed here in, 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 in this uh, wiki page. Um, let me find the exact place. So, so yeah, JIT, uh, know that the example below the century is correctly populated with the value member of, see, lowercase, although the hint Zabbix offers has the value member of with a capital O, and it was exactly the same here, uh, but uh, this is wrong, edit this bug was officially reported and fixed, resolved with the LDAP group membership mapping not matching case insensitive, insensitive entry. So apparently, like, if you're running the version above 642, 
I haven't tried, but from what I read, it looks like you can use the capital O. And uh, if you're running the version below this, then you must uh, fill in the lowercase member of as as I have. And uh, yeah, you can also read about all the other parameters here that are required for the JIT. Um, Find in the example. So basically, I am looking for a member of CN. So we're, we are looking for the group name attribute CN and uh, the user group membership attribute the member of that we just decided. And what we're looking for is the username and the user last name, which uh, we can also see here in the, in the PowerShell, the SN is Lambert and the username is, uh, where is the username, user, user, Ah, uh, I cannot see that. Wait, what? What was the what was the parameter? Uh, given name, username attribute, given name. So again, let's go back to our PowerShell and look for the given name. And given name is Dmitry. So we know that every time we'll log in, it will look for the first name and the last name uh, of the user that we are trying to log in with. And then there's the mapping thing, which actually decides like what kind of uh, permissions we will assign to the user who will try to log in. As example, I've set up two. So whenever the pattern of the group and remember the group pattern was uh, here, like if I go to the subscribe, Dmitry Lambert has a member of users and John Doe is a member of uh, administrators. So that basically means so whenever the group pattern will be users, and you can also use the wildcards, by the way, uh, then what will happen, this user who is trying to log in will be assigned to the user group guests and user role guests role. And whenever the pattern will be administrators, then the user group will be Zabbix administrators and the user role will be the super admin role, which has everything set up. And whenever everything is set up for you, you can just click on a test and uh, admin will fail like this is wrong. Uh, so I can try in with the Dmitry L at uh, Dmitry.com uh, password that you will never guess and try to authenticate. No, let me try again. There we go, login successful. And you can also see like that the assigned user role is a guest role and a user group is a guest. And if I will try to log in with uh, Joan Doe at Dmitry.com and again, password that you will never guess again login is successful but this time the user role is super admin and the user group is the Zabbix administrator so everything is configured perfectly fine here and uh, also I, I did this mistake myself like I think it's a bit the UX issue uh, like whenever you fill everything here and you have your JIT provisioning enabled and all the parameters like by the way you can also fill in the uh, default media types for these users again based on the patterns so when this is filled in uh, don't forget to add a checkbox on enable JIT provisioning uh, here click update everything is done and then you can sign out and let's try to log in so again using my Dmitry L at Dmitry.com and remember this user is a part of the users group who has uh, permission mapping to be a guest and a guest obviously will not have any will not have a full access to the front end so we will know if everything is configured correctly and uh, I fill in the password you will never guess and uh, here we are we're logged in with this user and as you can see we don't have any configuration options available so we truly know that we are guests and if we sign out and try to log in with uh, John Doe and again fill in the password that you will never 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 uh, Yes, and we logged in and we're full administrators as we had previously. So all of this works and we can go to the, I will log in with, with the default and internal authentication method with admin and I can go to the users users and you can see that these two, Dmitry L and John Doe are 
coming from the LDAP authentication. And this is the time when they were the last time provisioned uh, by, the, by the authentication LDAP server, which is called testing. Remember, I had a testing. And if you make some changes in the Active Directory or an LDAP or whatever, the changes by default are reflected every one hour are picked up uh, by the Zabbix every one hour and you cannot actually configure it less than this one hour. But what you can do is select the users that you want to provision and click the button provision now, which will make the changes to uh, apply immediately. So this is basically here, you can also find the attribute mapping and uh, uh, yeah, also the example for the login and, and also the example for the media type. I don't have the, I don't have Azure uh, Active Directory, but if you do, if you do use the SAML or SCIM, uh, you can find the tutorial also here and everything that you will require. As per usual, I will post the link in the description of the video so you can follow along all the commands and also find some, some other good tutorials that I've also made a video about previously. But uh, thank you guys for watching as usual and we will see you sometime later in, in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.